Hello and thanks for listening. The following is the audio version of the book, You Must Be Born Again. Both a printed version and ebook version are available. To request either one free of charge, contact me at the email address listed here. There are additional footnotes and references included in the printed and ebook versions, so it may be worth your while if this topic interests you. This audiobook is broken into five parts. All five are in the playlist on the YouTube channel at Hope in Dark Times. Thanks again. Part 1 Under Cover of Night Many of us have become accustomed to the phrase, you must be born again. This statement is often emphasized as something people should do here and now, and it may be portrayed as a prerequisite for obtaining salvation or being saved. The origin of this statement can be traced back to Jesus' conversation with a man named Nicodemus, as recorded in the third chapter of John. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a teacher, and leader among the Jews, approached Jesus under the cover of night, likely to avoid being seen by his fellow Pharisees. After acknowledging that he and many other Pharisees secretly recognized Jesus as being sent by God because of the miraculous signs and wonders he performed, Jesus spoke candidly to Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. 3. Nicodemus found this statement perplexing and inquired, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? John 3, 4. Nicodemus was approaching the matter in a purely literal sense, and obviously the mechanics of it would not work. In response, Jesus clarified, saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. John 3, 5 through 6. Jesus went on to urge him, Do not marvel that I said to you, You must be born again. John 3, 7. Jesus further asked, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? John 3, 10. What in the world did Jesus mean? Even Nicodemus, a Pharisee deeply knowledgeable in the scriptures, struggled immensely to grasp this concept. It might surprise you to learn that it was during this dialogue with the Pharisee Nicodemus that Jesus delivered his renowned and widely recognized statement found in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. NKJV. Remarkably, these were the words spoken by Jesus to a Pharisee who had approached him discreetly under the cover of night and not to a crowd of people. We shouldn't criticize Nicodemus for struggling to understand Jesus' reference to being born again. In his characteristic manner, Jesus was not using plain and straightforward language. After noting that Nicodemus was a teacher of Israel and questioning why he found it challenging to grasp despite his knowledge, Jesus stated, Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness of what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. John 3.11 Jesus used the plural form, we. Could someone have been with him? Perhaps his disciples? The text doesn't clarify whether anyone was present with him. If it were his disciples, it would be unusual for Jesus to include them in this statement, as he had never previously indicated their complete understanding. Furthermore, what witness could his disciples have had that they had seen? Instead of referring to his disciples, Jesus utilized we to encompass himself and the scriptures. The scriptures during his era would have included the law and the prophets, known to us today as the Old Testament. By highlighting Nicodemus's role as a teacher of Israel, Jesus directly connected these scriptures to the conversation. On a separate occasion, Jesus had conveyed to a group of Pharisees, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. John 5:39 through 40 and verse 46. 
In the ongoing conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus conveys to him, If I had told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? John 3.12 The suggestion here is that Jesus had initially used a tangible, biological, and earthly illustration to describe a heavenly or spiritual concept in his statement, You must be born again. However, to provide a more in-depth explanation of the concept behind, you must be born again, Jesus needed to delve into more spiritual insights. And that's precisely what he proceeds to do. Jesus proceeds with Nicodemus, explaining that he must be lifted up, much like how Moses had lifted up a serpent in the wilderness for people to see. This was yet another indirect reference to the way and fact of his impending crucifixion. Just as the serpent lifted up by Moses was intended to save lives, Jesus' lifting up would also serve the purpose of saving lives. Considering this context, we should revisit the initial question. What was the intended meaning behind Jesus' statement, You must be born again? It should be evident by now that he did not mean re-entry into one's mother's womb for a physical rebirth. Jesus provided a clue that the answer could be found within the scriptures of his era, the Old Testament. 